Hey everyone, welcome back to Fuzzy Logic Lectures. We were learning about propositional logic and logical connectives in the last video and so far we learned about conjunction and disjunction connectives. In this video, we will learn about the remaining connectives which are implication, equivalence and negation. So let us start our lecture. Mathematical propositions of the form if P then Q are called implications. Another way of saying implication is P implies Q. The implication connective is represented in propositional logic with this sign. Here the proposition P is called the antecedent premise or hypothesis and the proposition Q is called the consequent or conclusion. Also, the statement as a whole is called either the conditional or the consequence. Let us take a look at the truth table for implication. Now, to understand this truth table, let us take an example. Suppose you have a statement as, if you score 90% or above in the subject, then you will get a grade A. Here, the proposition P is you scoring 90% or above in the subject and the proposition Q is you will get an A grade. What this statement means is that you are going to be guaranteed with an A grade provided you score 90% or above in the subject. So, if you scored 95% in the subject, then the premise P is true. And if you got an A grade, then the premise Q is also true. So, the promise was kept and hence we can consider the overall statement as true. Therefore, P implies Q is true when both P and Q are true. However, in the next case, let us say your grade is not an A even though you scored 95%. That means the proposition P is true because you scored above 90%. But since your grade is not A, the proposition Q is false. Thus, the promise is broken and hence the overall statement is false. So, when P is true and Q is false, P implies Q is also false. Now, consider the situation in which you do not score 90% or above in the subject. So, what will happen? Will the final statement be true or false? Here, it is very important to note that this particular statement does not say what grade you would receive if you score less than 90%. So, for instance, if you scored 82% in the subject and received a B grade, you cannot say that the promise is broken. Also, if you scored 82% in the subject and end up with an A grade, you still cannot say that the promise is broken. So, when the premise or hypothesis P of the implication is false, then it is a very tricky situation. We cannot say that the implication is false. Yet, we have no evidence to say that it is true. Since P did not happen at all, we will consider this situation as vacuously true. Irrespective of the state of Q, when P is false, P implies Q is true. Now, I have used the term vacuous truth. What does that mean? A vacuous truth is a conditional or universal statement that is true but not in an intelligent or meaningful way. For example, suppose you are in a room full of people and none of them have a phone with them at all, including you. Now you get up and declare that all the phones in this room are switched off. Well, this statement by you is technically true because no one has phones in their hands. So, any phone in the room can be considered as switched off. That is why in the last two cases of the truth table, P implies Q will be taken as true or to be precise, taken as vacuously true. The point here is that the use of implies in logic is very different from its everyday language to reflect causality. Another way to look at this is through a statement, innocent until proven guilty. So, this is taken as a statement that is considered true until it is proven false. 
Since we cannot call the statement P implies Q as false when P is false, our only alternative is to call it true and hence we get a truth table like this. So it is very important to note and remember that a false hypothesis can mean anything. Let us consider one more implication. If January has 31 days, then all dogs are mammals. Here we know that there is no causal relation between the days of the month and dogs being mammals. However, since both hypothesis and conclusion of this statement is true, this implication is indeed true as per our truth table. So basically the point I am trying to convey here is that the use of implication in logic is very different from its use in everyday language. I hope you got it. Next we have equivalence. If P and Q are two simple propositions, then P equivalence Q can be written like this. The equivalence connective is generally used when we have a dual implication for propositions P and Q. That is, if P implies Q and Q implies P, then we can say that P equivalence Q. A statement of the form P equivalence Q is regarded as true if P and Q are either both true or both false and regarded as false if both P and Q have different truth values. Also, P equivalence Q is sometimes referred to as P if and only if Q. Now, we will be tempted to use it the same way as we use it in English language. However, please remember that they are not alike in all ways because equivalence in propositional logic is used entirely truth functionally. Regardless of what propositions P and Q are and what relation they have to one another, if both P and Q are false, then P implies Q is considered to be true. As an example, consider the statement Earth is a star if and only if Milky Way is a moon. Just because the simpler statements P and Q happens to be false, we do not consider the entire statement to be true with regards to English language. However, this is a perfectly true statement with regards to propositional logic. I hope now you understood what I am trying to convey here. Next, we have negation. The negation, not P, is true exactly when P is false and is written like this. Unlike other connectives we have learned, negation is applied to a single statement. Therefore, it has a much simpler truth table like this. Now, in mathematics, it is important to determine what the opposite of a given mathematical statement is. So, let us take a look at some of the most common negations. As an example, consider the statement, you are either smart or observant. For this statement to be false, you can't be smart and you can't be observant. In other words, the opposite is to be not smart and not observant. So the negation of this statement will be, you are not smart and not observant. Here have you noticed how the or has changed to and in negation. So in general, if you have two propositions P and Q, then the negation of P disjunction Q is negation of P conjunction negation of Q. Now consider another statement, you are both smart and observant. Here proposition P is you are smart and proposition Q is you are observant. Now for this statement to be false, you could be either not smart or not observant. So the negation of this statement is you are not smart or not observant. Again, note that with negation and and or got interchanged. So in general, we can say that for two propositions P and Q, negation of P conjunction Q is equal to negation of P disjunction negation of Q. 
Next, consider the statement, if you are smart, then you are observant. For this statement to be false, you have to be smart and not observant. So, the negation will be, you are smart and not observant. To generalize, for two propositions P and Q, negation of P implies Q is equal to P conjunction negation of Q. Now, sometimes we come across statements such as for every, for all, for any and there exists. As an example, consider the statement, if all rich people are happy, then all poor people are sad. We can see that this statement is of the form P implies Q, where P is all rich people are happy and Q is all poor people are sad. Also, just now we learned that negation of P implies Q is equal to P conjunction not Q. So, to find the negation of this statement, let us first find the negation of proposition Q. Negation of statement Q is, there exists a poor person who is not sad. Here, please note that all has changed to there exists. So, the negation of this statement is, all rich people are happy and there exists a poor person who is not sad. Taking one more example, consider the statement, for all integers n, either n is a prime number or n is a composite number. Now, this statement may look different from what we have studied so far. But if you look closely, this is just another form of if p then q. We can reword this statement as, if n is an integer, then either n is a prime number or n is a composite number. Let us break this sentence down. Here, p is n is an integer and proposition q is n is a prime number or n is a composite number. Again, we know that negation of p implies q is equal to p conjunction negation of q. So, let us try to find the negation of proposition q. Here, you can see that proposition q is a compound proposition and can be further broken down into simple propositions r and s, where proposition r is n is a prime number and proposition s is n is a composite number. So, the negation of q is equal to negation of r disjunction s, which is equal to negation of r conjunction negation of s, which we learned earlier. Negation of r is n is not a prime number and negation of s is n is not a composite number. So, negation of q is n is not a prime number and n is not a composite number. Therefore, the negation of this statement becomes there exists an n so that n is not a prime number and n is not a composite number. Please note that in general, when we negate a statement having for all, for any or for every, the phrases for every, for any and for all gets replaced with their exists. Now, let me give you a little exercise. We have reworded our original sentences if then here. Can you try to negate this reworded sentence? Let me know your answers in the comments. Okay, so we have learned all the five logical connectives and their truth tables. For conjunction, we can see that the truth table of P conjunction Q is simply the minimum of the truth of P and truth of Q. Similarly, for disjunction, truth value of P disjunction Q is the maximum of the truth value of P and truth value of Q. For implication, we have truth value of P implies Q is equal to truth value of negation of P disjunction 
q coming to equivalence truth value of p equivalence q is equal to 1 when truth value of p is equal to truth value of q and equal to 0 when truth value of p is not equal to truth value of q. Finally, for negation, truth value of not p is equal to 1 when truth value of p is equal to 0 and is equal to 0 when truth value of p is equal to 1. In addition to this, we have learned how to negate various statements. To summarize, a statement of the form A or B can be negated as not A and not B. Similarly, a statement of the form A and B can be negated as not A or not B. A statement of the form if A then B can be negated as A and not B. For the statement for all x A of x, the negation is there exists A x such that not a of x. Finally, for the statement there exists a x such that a of x, the negation is for every x not a of x. That's all for this lecture. In the next video, we will learn about tautologies. I hope that all the concepts taught in this video are clear to all of you. If you have any doubts, please feel free to ask them in the comments. Either me or some other viewer will surely help you out. Also, if you found the lecture useful, please like the video and support us by subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching Topperly and have a great day.